Tonight, Facebook announcing it's banning former President Trump for at least two years over his comments related to the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. In a statement, Facebook saying, given the gravity of the circumstances that led to Mr. Trump's suspension, we believe his actions constituted a severe violation of our rules, which merit the highest penalty available under the new enforcement protocols. Facebook's oversight board had called on the tech giant to set an end date for his suspension. The move will keep Mr. Trump off Facebook and Instagram through the midterm elections. Today, he slammed the decision. Facebook's ruling is an insult to the record-setting 75 million people, plus many others, who voted for us. They shouldn't be allowed to get away with this censoring and silencing, and ultimately we will win. Nigeria's government has indefinitely suspended Twitter after the platform removed a tweet by its president, which threatened to punish regional successionists. The ban has been attributed to the persistent use of Twitter for activities capable of undermining Nigeria's corporate existence. The government hasn't given any more explanation or said how the ban would work in practice. Twitter says the move is deeply concerning. Police are identifying this suspect accused of opening fire on a mother and her two children, an apparent road rage incident, and it was all caught on camera. Take a look at the surveillance video here. Police say 42-year-old Kenneth Davis Jr. got out of his gray Maserati and started shooting at the vehicle in front of him after it apparently cut him off. A mother and her two children, ages 5 and 11, were inside. The mother was found suffering from a gunshot wound. The children were not hit by gunfire, but the five-year-old did suffer from minor cuts because of the shattered glass. Davis is now facing a charge of assault with a dangerous weapon, and police say they're now identifying his name and releasing that photo, hoping that someone comes forward with information that will lead to his arrest. Japan has donated 1.24 million doses of the AstraZeneca COVID vaccine to Taiwan. The vaccines landed in Taoyuan early Friday afternoon. Health Minister Chen Shizhong said the vaccines, after passing inspection, will be first offered to healthcare workers and other frontline workers, as well as residents of long-term care homes and people 75 and older. A standoff on the streets of Melbourne turning ugly. Oh, <laughs> Protesters refusing to wear masks, calling for the lockdown to end. At least three were handcuffed by police outside Flinders Street Station. Dozens of officers surrounded vaccination hubs, ready for anti-vaxxers to demonstrate. Outside vaccination hubs were long queues of people following the health advice. Anti-vax protesters were nowhere to be seen. Police turning away from the centres to face the chaos in the CBD as fed-up residents demonstrate against restrictions, demanding the city's fourth and extended lockdown come to an end. Derek Chauvin will be sentenced for George Floyd's murder in just a few weeks. Now, both the prosecution and defense have an idea of what that should be. The state is asking that Chauvin spend 30 years in prison. Chauvin's lawyer also filed a request yesterday on the former Minneapolis officer's behalf. The lawyer is asking for probation, asking for prison time that's equal to what Chauvin has already served, also asking for a new trial. Chauvin's sentencing is scheduled for June 25th.